Best Ball Mania. We're bike. It's a Sunday morning, seven days a week, seven different freaks. Don't let me heat up right now. I'm in my Zendaya shirt. We're tucked. We're doing a Best Ball Mania draft. It's 18 rounds. This is one quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, one tight end, one flex. No defense, no kickers. Just how mama showed us how to make it. Best Ball Mania on underdog. If y'all are not already an underdog, if you don't even like to... Here's the thing. They got so many fucking options. Right now, they literally have a site-wide special. 0.5 points for LeBron. They're literally they're giving you free money. 0.5 points for LeBron. One basket, one free throw, one shot, one anything. It just needs to get into the bucket. It needs to get into the basket. And you are a winner on underdog. Use promo code BDGE when you get on there, and they're going to give you 100% deposit match. So if you throw $25 on there, use promo code BDGE. Guess what? Now you can hit this line, or you got two BBM4 entries you got two yeah. underdog fantasy link down below go down the app promo code bdge join a best ball mania draft take 25 dollars, whatever take my whole soul we're waiting for three more going live on sunday and the only way that you can get into these right now is through discord so if you're not in our discord you got to join our discord because i i do these streams or i'm going to start doing some of these streams unlisted and then re-uploading them to youtube the next day as regular videos so you got to be part of the community you got to be part of the discord if you want to be chatting and yelling at me and she waiting for mr ercolano i'm here baby i showed up tucked in and tucked out all right so strategy today we're going to be doing so many of these drafts throughout the summer that it makes no sense for you not to sign up and join us on underdog right now i'm going to be picking an only upside team a full upside team a team that every player that i pick i'm gonna try i don't know how this is gonna work out every player that i pick i know the team might not work out well actually it might be terrible but every player that i pick has a real chance if things break right to finish obviously when we get to like round 14 15 16 the players stink but i'm gonna try to draft a player that i think realistically can finish top three top five in their position so the beginning rounds everybody's fucking go a rich first round tensile park looking good right i had my team make like a fake setup at central park that worked all night just to have this background so i can be out in the sun so i can get my raise first pick off the board justin jefferson let me open up the big board for you guys so you can see it again this is best ball so if you've never played best ball that's what underdog does these are not season long leagues uh they do play out throughout the season so you you draft your team and then you come back at the end of the year and you win money. They draft very big rosters, so we draft 18 players, and they automatically start the best players at each position each week for you. One quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, one tight end, one flex. So you've got a big roster, so you draft a lot of players, and they just start the best ones. So Underdog's a lot of fun because you don't have to worry about waiver wire. You don't have to be doing sit starts. You don't have to trade, anything like that. You just draft the teams. You draft a million teams, like a billion teams, one quadrillion teams, and then, uh, and then you let it ride. A lot of fun. They become really addicting, honestly. All right, catwalking. Let's go, buddy. Oh, we got a snapback jack fan in here. Or we got two. We got two uh, headbands right here. I'm hoping that Underdog gives us our own special icon. Usually what they do. All right, so I'm up. Uh, I mean, it's the first round. Everybody's got crazy upside. Here's what I'm going to do. You know what? I'm actually going to play along with the thumbnail. It's hard to make thumbnails for these videos because I have to make the thumbnail before I actually draft, you know? So a lot of times I put players in thumbnails and people are like, you didn't even fucking draft that guy. So I drafted AJ Brown and I have him on the thumbnail. It's beautiful. I don't hate him at the 106. I probably would have taken Cooper Cup over him. Just, you know, pound for pound, click for click, raw meat for raw meat. That made no sense. AJ Brown, Eagles, I think last year was obviously a phenomenal year for him and Jalen Hurts. I think Jalen Hurts was wildly efficient. I do kind of question just based on like the target volume that he got. Will he be able to really perform up to where like the Cooper Cup, Stefan Diggs are? But I also don't want to overthink. AJ Brown's one of the better pure prospects we've seen at the wide receiver position in a really long time. So I think he's absolutely worth your, he's kind of like a little bit like Tyree Kill, almost like the wide receiver version of Jonathan Taylor in a sense. But when them two are clicking, it's it's beautiful and it's magic. Even though Devonta Smith was right there in terms of targets, so I do wonder. I'm a little bit curious about how that gets dispersed up a little bit. But you know, nothing wrong with AJ Brown there, especially if you're, you know, you're not set on Cooper Cup and the the, the health of Matt Stafford here. So let's go AJB. Once again, you see a lot of receivers going off the board here. AJ Brown, Cooper Cup. We had Bijan at 108, Stephon Diggs, Devontae Adams, C.D. Lamb, Austin Eckler. I'm on Ra, Garrett Wilson. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 
So 11 of the first 14 picks were wide receivers. I'm almost back up here at the 207. Come on, be real travel. Ooh, you done fucked up, boy. Boy, I'm fast as fuck, boy. Uh, you gave me Jalen Hurts. You gave me the Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, Stizzy Stack. Now Mahomes is obviously sitting there on the board, but listen, Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, I'm not mad about it. It's a sexy stack. With Jalen Hurts, you're getting an RB1 in your quarterback slot because if you look at his look at his stats from last year, he's basically getting a touchdown a game. He had 13 rushing touchdowns. When they got on the goal line, he's basically like Derrick Henry on the goal line. And those 13 touchdowns don't even count the playoffs where he had fucking five rushing touchdowns. Insane. You think teams are going to be able to stop that when they're on the one-yard line? No. Still a great offensive line. They're going to move the ball like crazy next year. Um, yeah, so give me all the upside of Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown together. I love that stack. Come on, Josh. You were ready. You were sitting here for 10 minutes. How do you not get in? So much value, uh, so much RB value in the draft. Yep, which is why I don't really want to go with running backs early because they're going to keep popping down and you'll be able to get guys like Derrick Henry. You'll be able to get guys in the third round. Damn, I was, I was hoping Tony Pollard uh, fell to me down there. I knew it wasn't going to happen, but he is an absolutely all upside pick. All right, so we're almost back on the clock. We're two picks away. Nick Chubb doesn't really have the upside. Brees Hall doesn't really have the upside. Uh, ah, damn. I kind of hate doing like strategy drafts because it kind of pigeonholes you into players. Do we take our first running back or do we go with a wide receiver here? Brees Hall is kind of sexy. I do feel like his upside a little bit capped because he's not going to be playing at 100% this year. I kind of like Calvin Ridley. I'm not going to I'm not gonna lie. I feel like he's got some good upside, but I don't think he's got – I don't know if he's got top five upside at the position. If I'm looking at the board right now and I'm thinking about the highest upside players left, I think I like Ramondre here, man. I think I like Ramondre here. He was – um, he was an all-purpose back last year. They obviously get rid of Damian Harris, who was like his biggest competitor pretty much. But Ramondre Stevenson went for nearly 1,500 yards from scrimmage last year. 1,460 yards. Only scored six touchdowns, but caught 69 passes. I, I don't think like people understand just how involved in the passing game he was. And he was not involved for the first couple of weeks. Um. So you look at you look at his games, his game logs are crazy when it comes to targets. Five, five, two, five, eight, seven, seven, six, ten, eight, three, three, five, four, six. He was so involved in the passing game. It's what makes his upside so high. And he had some great rushing performances as well, right? Like 19 for 172 against Vegas, 25 for 161 against Detroit. He was up and down on the ground, but I think with Damian Harris out of there now, his upside on the ground is going to be phenomenal. I think he's going to have, I think his floor is going to be phenomenal as well. Um, but he's got absolute, like, you know, top five, top three upside at, at fantasy. But yeah, Stevenson, Jacobs, Hall, all great picks in this area. I agree. You know, at the end of the third round, like all three down, three skill, purpose, fucking all backs are, they're the GOAT. Would you trade Hertz for Kirk plus Chase, 12 team super flex? I have Hurts. Other quarterbacks are Carr, Hooker, Willis. Potential deal to trade Carr for Daniel Jones and work also. Uh, would you trade Hurts for Kirk? Your other QBs are Carr, Hooker, Willis. I mean, you need help at QB. Yeah, I, I, I would take that trade. I would I would take the Kirk plus Chase side. I think Chase and Hurts. Like I I take uh, Hurts, but honestly, not by much over Chase in like a startup. If I look at the the value of where they're getting picked in startup drafts, I'm not actually sure where it is. Let me check. Yeah, Jamar Chase is right behind Jalen Hurts. Two picks behind. So I think the fact that you're getting an extra starting QB in there is big time. Uh, I know where I got to go. Uh, this might be a rough take, but I actually feel like Amari Cooper's got... I think he's really underrated this year. I think, um, I think his upside comes in the fact that if Deshaun Watson clicks, then it's going to be Amari Cooper who goes kind of bananas here. I think I could have looked at Jerry Judy um, if Russell Wilson clicks, and Jerry Judy's probably the biggest beneficiary. I think Drake London's probably got a lot of upside. Um, Terry McLaurin probably does too, but whatever. I, I think if Deshaun Watson and the Browns wide receivers can like pull their shit together, I think Cooper's actually got some uh, underrated upside. He had a good year. I mean, he started off fucking scorching hot last year. I think he's, uh, I think he's underrated. He had 1,160 receiving yards, 132 targets, which was a career high, 78 catches, nine touchdowns, uh, four, five games of over 100 yards. He was like relatively consistent. He had a couple down games, um, but for the most part, he was he was a pretty damn good fantasy wide receiver. And I think if Deshaun Watson can really get his shit together, Cooper will get his shit together. Are you scared at all for the Patriots to spread the ball 
in the backfield. I mean, yeah, that's that's like always going to be a problem. That's always going to be something that you got to be worried about. Um, I do think that like sometimes they force it, but I feel like more often than not, they don't force touches to other running backs unless they actually feel like they're talented. And I don't really know if we had that in Kevin Harris and Pierre strong. Like if they had brought in a veteran, uh, you know, outside of James Robinson, or if they saw like James white or something like that, I would be a little bit more nervous, but I feel like they showed this is the first time in a while that they really showed someone could have a three down skill set and like actually utilize him in that sense. And that's what they did with Ramondre Stevenson. So I can't imagine they look back at what they did last year with Ramondre and are like, yeah, we're not, uh, yeah, we're not going to use him in a three down skill set. I'm sure he'll he'll share touches. He's not going to be a guy who gets 80% of the touches in the backfield because that's not how, the way the NFL operates anymore. But, you know, Ramondre's a beast, dude. I, th- I think their offense will run through him. What do we got here? So we had Najee, Mike Williams, George Kittle, Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen, Joe Mixon, and Terry McLaurin at the turn there. I'm up in two picks. Jerry Judy goes off the board. You're so mad that I said that he was, uh, that he had 400 pass attempts. We're sticking with the all upside team. We're sticking with the all upside team. There's really only one, one generational player on the board right now, and his name is Kyle Pitts. You want to talk about the all upside team? Kyle Pitts is the leader, the captain, the most disappointing, which means he's ready to fucking rock this year. Third year in the NFL. Let's go. Let's go, Pitty. I think I show I showed you guys a stat on the last live stream. Um Kyle Pitts just he, 59% of his targets were deemed catchable. Only 59. That was the lowest percentage by far of any tight end with over 200 routes. The average catchable target rate was 79%. Super Bowl runs through Atlanta. Yeah! If we don't get that to become a catchphrase by next year, like it really, you know, it's going to be incredible when it actually does start to run through Atlanta. Because we're, we're building a dynasty. We're built, we basically have all the pieces in place. One more piece, and then we're fucking Super Bowl champs. All right, let's get back to reality here. So on Kyle Pitts, we had Pittman, Drake London, Miles Sanders, JSN, Brandon Ayuk. I almost went with Sanders. I feel like he's got a three down upside. I think he's a player that fits the mold of this uh, of this team that we have so far. We have AJ Brown, Jalen Hurts, Ramondre Stevenson, Amari Cooper, Kyle Pitts so far. Are we abiding by the rules, you guys think? Let's go RB. They're going to start going off in the value. And the six is nice. Yeah, I mean... I actually feel like there's so there's just good value everywhere with running backs. I do want to keep stacking wide receivers though, because I feel like uh, I feel like starting through wide receivers, you really have to go crazy. I mean, be real is going nuts with it. He went five receivers off the rip: Cup, Alave, Samuel, Hopkins, Pittman, which is not a bad fucking. It's it's not a terrible strategy because you can get such solid um, players in other positions. Now's the point where like you don't even really there's not really much upside left at wide receiver. Like none of these dudes are finishing that high. Yeah, the wide receiver, they they you're absolutely right. They they fucking dry up, they fry up hard. Probably should have taken Trevor Lawrence there, to be honest. Fuck. Fuck. All right. Yeah. Evan's definitely not part of the all upside team. He's absolutely like the opposite of the upside team. Gives us a thousand yards every year. That's gonna be a much harder feat. Although, listen, I get it. Like, it's gonna be a shit show there in Tampa Bay. Obviously, Brady's gone, but Evans was doing that. Evans went for a thousand yards, like 10 straight years. And he only played with Brady twice. Okay. He had other quarterbacks. He had Fitzpatrick. He had James Winston. He had fucking Josh Freeman. I think one year, I don't even know at this point, Mike Evans has done it with uh, many other quarterbacks. So when he puts up a thousand yards and seven touchdowns again this year, and he does what DK Metcalf did last off season, you know, we could fucking have this conversation again. Should have went with Trevor Lawrence though. He's an absolutely all upside pick. Now all the running backs are coming off the board. Damn. Zam. I get it. That's where the uh, that's where the value is. That is where the value is for sure. Pacheco has a ton of upside in KC. Akers has the three down upside. Pierce, I feel like is just a beast. Swift, obviously, if he captures that starting role in Philly and can stay healthy, he'll be uh, a monster with a ton of upside as well. So all those running backs, like if you're going for the all upside team, this end of sixth round, early seventh round is where those running backs are going to start ripping off. And even like it's funny because. Starting to do underdog drafts uh, like a month ago, these running backs were going in this uh, like at the end of the seventh, the early eighth round. So you start to see them push up, you know, week after week after week because we'd be we'd be doing these streams all the time, and I start yelling at y'all for doing dumb shit. So if you want to be part of these streams again, make sure you download the underdog app. Ah, fuck! I want to Rashad White there. I felt like he was on the all upside team. Make sure you download the underdog app. Use promo code BDG if it's your first time depositing, and we can boogie. Hmm. Oh, 
Yeah. Do I want to stack? Do I want to stack Watson with Cooper? That's an upside play, but I also feel like how can I pass up on Ant? If I'm talking about the all upside team, I mean Anthony Richardson. Who 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 is more upside than him? Fuck it. We going to Sean. We go into Sean Watstein with Amari Cooper. We got Jalen Hurts with AJ Brown. Actually, I, I think that's a good stack there. Watson obviously has t- uh, upside, right? He, he used to be a, a top five fantasy QB a couple of years ago, a few years ago. He's not that far removed from it. Cleveland's got a good offensive line and good enough weapons. They'll be much more pass heavy this year. Danny Dimes scored more points per game than T-Law. I think you dodged a bullet. Uh, I mean, like just basing it off last year's, that's just like, I mean, Trevor Lawrence, the development that he's going to take from from year two to three is going to be, is y- you, you can't understate that. Like the the jump from year two, the jump that we saw Trevor Lawrence take in the second half of last year is insane. Don't be surprised when we look back and like Trevor Lawrence is in that elite tier of fantasy, you know, quarterbacks going into next year. Watson Hurts QB room is wild. Yeah, I don't know if it's wild good or wild bad. When I cash out, the BBM has fifteen million dollars in prizes. It's fucking insane. Three million to first place, I think a million to second place, and just so much, so much green covering this this earth you, you done think it was earth day t-law could take a jump what's the point in paying the post jump price before i mean you're not playing paying the post jump price the post jump price would be him being you know the qb3 or 4 next year and he's going you're not you're not paying that much for him like he went off the board where do you go end of the sixth round where you know you're waiting two three rounds herbert went in the fourth round these other guys went in the third like it's not relative to where the other guys are going it's oh fuck i'm on the clock oh sheesh all right, let's see what we got. A running back, Javante. Ah, I, I know people will argue that he is a uh, all upside pick, but I don't think he really has a clear path to playing. I do kind of think Zach Charbonnet is kind of on the all upside team. I, I'm gonna go with Charb. Uh, no, I'm not doing that over Dotson. Yeah. So like with T Law, for me, it feels like less of like a project. It, it feels like less of you're guessing that he's gonna take the jump, and more of like this. This just probably is the trajectory for him. If you were paying this price for someone who's a younger quarterback in this range, like like if you were paying for, I have way less confidence that like Tua is going to take the jump up to elite QB than uh, Trevor Lawrence. Similar like trajectories, but I feel way more comfortable saying that Trevor Lawrence is going to be there at the end of next year, especially the way that they're building around him with the offense and the weapons and the pass catchers and things like that. Now we're seeing the QBs rip off. Kirk Cousins, Evan Ingram, Daniel Jones, Tua. There goes Michael Thomas. Let's let's talk let's talk through some running back cases here. Um, if Kenneth Walker were to get hurt, obviously Zach Charbonnet's upside is insane. Alexander Madison, if if Dalvin Cook gets moved, if Dalvin Cook gets moved or cut, then um, Madison becomes a starting running back there, obviously, and he has a lot of upside. We've seen him do it on a you know on a weekly basis when it's his backfield. Dylan, I, I don't know. At this point, it's like even if Aaron Jones goes down, do I really have confidence that Dylan's going to have a little upside? Brian Robinson is like the least upside player ever. Uh, Penny and A-Chain definitely have a bunch of upside down here. Penny just in an, an insane offense, a beautiful offense. So he's got to compete with Swift now, but you know a lot of things can go wrong there. Plus, they they got they got a lot of uh, they got a lot of stuff going on. In Philly, a lot of offensive firepower. Although I do have Hertz and AJ Brown already, so he would uh, he would be my third rank running back here, anyways. And I think I'd probably take if I'm going just all upside right now. Mm, a chain, Charbonnet, whoo! I like both of them a lot. Uh, I think I'm gonna go A chain here. I think he's got more upside. I think um, he is the perfect upside play in the night he's going to end up being like a seventh round pick sixth round pick by the time redraft leagues come around and that's probably going to be too expensive for me but i'm going to try to get him as much as humanly possible while he's down here in the ninth round goes to the mike mcdaniel offense just a perfect fit and he's a coach that does not really care much about the size of the running back right i've talked about this in some of my previous videos where it's like um like you just look at the previous running backs that he's used before whether it's uh, Breda or C Mac or McKinnon or um, Moster or any of those dudes, like he'll just feed them until they get hurt, which is fine because Devin A. Chain's pr- proven that he can handle a workload, right? So um, hopefully he gets fed as much as he can handle. 
I would love. He's such an exciting player, man. He's just so explosive. He's so underrated in between the tackles. So excited to get a chain down here. Kinky baby. All right, we're queued up, ready to go. I hate doing these fucking drafts with you guys in them because you see my queue. I'm like leaving out two players from the queue because I don't want you to see me put them in there and take them from me. Ooh, we saw the Baltimore wide receivers go back to back there. Oh, Fanta took both of them. Oh, does he have Lamar? No, he does not. He's got the whole Baltimore offense outside of Lamar. Uh, questionable sheet. He's got Bateman. He's got Odell. He's got J.K. Dobbins. I like J.K. Dobbins a lot this year. Uh, Chiggy would have been my second tight end. He's a ton of upside. Fuck. Chiggy's an upside player for sure. Don't use a Q. Yeah, and then when I auto-draft and take players that I don't like, then everyone's like, use the Q. You know, there's no winning here. All right, both of my running backs went off the board. So you know what? I'm taking Kincaid. People can hate on me for that, 10-7. Uh, I've seen him go earlier, but that's probably the earliest I'd take a rookie tight end. I love Kincaid, though, man. I, actually, I, I legitimately think he has 800 to 900 yard upside as a rookie. He is such a good pass catcher. He is so natural in what he does as a receiver. I think he could be the second weapon in that. <laughs> I think he can be the second weapon in that offense in Buffalo very quickly. Yes, sir. He's definitely part of my all upside team. Ah, you took Elijah Moore. I wanted to go uh, Deshaun Watson, Mark Cooper, Elijah Moore stack. That would have been nice. I wonder if big time is big time in this chat right now. Big time one. I wonder if you took him because you saw him in my damn queue. We know who the wide receiver one is. It's Mark Andrews. Every other receiver is going to get like 800 yards, bro. Give it up. You realize that the year that like Hollywood Brown went absolutely nuts with 146 targets. He had 1,000 yards. Barely went over 1,000. You know how many pass catchers each year go over 1,000 yards? So fucking many. It's a, it, that, that's not like a great fantasy uh, indicator whatsoever. 21 wide receivers last year that went over 1,000 yards. The year before that, 23. I love Kincaid, but I do have a bad feeling they want to spread the ball more like Mahomes. Yeah, dude, I, I listen, I hear that. Um, I think there's a chance that uh, they're just a, a team that does put the ball in so many different spots, and it does lead to not having a lot of um, targets for Kincaid, but I, I don't want to miss the train if he does hit. Put it that way. Yes, sir. How is Jarek McKinnon? I'm telling you, Jarek McKinnon is is without a doubt the single best value in best ball dress right now. At the 11-6, you're getting a dude who is the clear pass catching running back in just an absolutely electric offense. They didn't bring anyone in. It's literally just McKinnon and Pacheco there. He's going to ball again this year. He's going to be one of the best value picks in uh, in fantasy. I want to see where he finished last year. Finishes the RB21 in half PPR. 72 carries, 291 yards, one rushing touchdown. I think there's room for upside there. Uh, 71 catches, 56 or 71 targets, 56 catches, 512 receiving yards, nine receiving touchdowns. Nine receiving touchdowns. The next closest running back, he led the NFL running backs with nine receiving touchdowns. The next closest running back was Eckler at five. Was Eckler at five. Brothers, my brothers in Christ. Do you know how many wide receivers in the NFL had more receiving touchdowns than Jerick McKinnon? Three. Devontae Adams, A.J. Brown, and Stephon Diggs. Oh, my goodness. Jerick McKinnon, Jarek McKinnon, say it with me, Jarek McKinnon, every time in the 11th round. This is beautiful. We waited on running backs, and we are still looking at Ramondre, Devon A. Chain, and Jarek McKinnon. Let's look at the board. Let's look at the board. Starting to see a lot of these rookie wide receivers go off now. We had Jonathan Mingo at the 11-8. We had Jalen Hyatt at the 11-9. I like that. Uh, I like doing these as non-live streams kind of now because if I just want to sit here and chill and not speak, you know, just go into hermit mode, I can just fast forward the board in the editing afterwards. What a time.
what a great time to be alive. Kendra Miller. Kendra Miller probably could have got onto the all upside team. I think there's a chance that we're looking at Kendra Miller like last eight weeks of the season, last six weeks of the season, and he's like number one on uh on like waiver wire lists. I could see it. Ah. Ah. You took Rashi Rice from me, you son of a bitch. Ooh, I know what I'm doing here. No, no, no. Okay. All right. All right. All right. We took the guy that was at the top of the queue, anyways. I was going to go with Donovan Peoples Jones there. I, I was debating between Sky Moore because I think he's got a lot of upside if he can come in and actually like be a player in that Casey offense. And I was, you know, Tyler Boyd. They added Irv Smith, who I really like, but until we actually see him put it together, it's hard to actually take him seriously. So Tyler Boyd, you know, without uh, a real tight end there, I feel like Tyler Boyd could see an uptick in targets. And then I was thinking of Donald Peoples Jones, not because I actually love him. I don't think he's like phenomenal, but again, that could have been the cheaper stack. I wanted to grab uh, Watson with Cooper and then put it together with Elijah Moore, who they just brought in, but Elijah Moore got picked before I could take him. So I was going to stack him back up with uh, Donovan Peoples Jones. And uh, and then the Q hit me like a fucking freight train. You sons of bitches. Miller, Spears, Chase Brown, all have pretty decent paths to take over. What? How does Tajay Spears have any sort of path to take over with Derrick Henry there? Miller, I actually feel like... Miller, I think, is better than Jamal Williams. And then if Alvin Kamara gets suspended, which I think is semi-likely, like Miller, I could see actually earning his upside, like earning a path to take over Spears. There's no fucking chance that Spears is, uh, is uh, fucking doing anything. He's not doing anything in Tennessee. Chase Brown, Chase Brown also not actually doing anything unless Joe Mixon gets hurt. So I would have to argue there. Fly, fly meat. Uh, what up, Larry? You late, baby. Yeah. The bill. I'm feeling good about this build right now. There is one more player I kind of want right now. Uh, oh, DPJ still sitting there. Let's go. All right, there we go. Now I'm feeling good about my uh, my Cleveland stack. Now we got Watson. Now we got DPJ. Now we got Cooper. All right, Watson, just throw for 5,000 yards, and now we're up. We up, City boys. Up! Chase Brown's going to catch passes. Yeah, that, that that's very true. I do think that Cincinnati has shown a propensity not to want to throw the ball to Joe Mixon. Uh, they did it with Gio Bernard when he was there. They did it with Samaja Piran, obviously, last year. So, yeah, Chase Brown is probably the uh, – Chase Brown is obviously the guy there. The catch passes. It's all right, Christian Watson, Mark Cooper, though. I, yeah, I mean, listen, I would take – especially in this type of bill where I'm trying to just go for, like, a ton of upside, um, I would have taken Watson over Cooper. I don't think he was available, though. Let me check the board. I took Cooper in the fourth. Watson went two picks before him. So if they were both on the board, I think I probably. Oh no, never mind. Because I took Watson after. If what if if Christian Watson was available at forty three, I would have taken him there instead of uh, instead of Amari Cooper. And I probably would end up doing the same thing. I probably would have done um, instead of Cooper and Watson. I would have went Christian Watson and Jordan Love down here in whatever thirteenth, fourteenth round. I would have went with the stack still, but you know Watson wasn't available. Let's see what we got late here. Let's see if I like any of these picks. I like Gibson down at one forty three. I think he kind of like stinks as a running back, but he's going to catch a shitload of passes. And if Brian Robinson goes down, then he's going to get uh, a ton of work. His vision is terrible, but still a great athlete, so he's got some upside. Bryce Young, Jordan Love, MVS, KJ Osborne. Tyler Algier, DPJ, great pick by me. Jalen Warren, I like that. I like Jalen Warren. Deonta Foreman, Dawson Knox, Greg Dolchic, Raheem Mostert, Trey Lance, Sam Laporta, Jeff Wilson. We're getting into risky business. We're getting into uh, to scary hours. Come and rescue me. <laughs> see what we got let's start the queue you know i love josh downs damn i actually wanted zeke i wanted zeke really bad and then i wanted josh downs and both of them got taken zeke was like my other guy in this area that i really um 
that I really wanted. Zeke's going to end up landing somewhere and having an immediate role. Whatever team signs him, and I think that will really happen where he'll go to a competitor. Like, Zeke's not signing with a team. I hate Zach Evans here. He's definitely... I don't think I can go... Ugh, actually, every, ugh, ugh. players left are gross. Oh, no, no. Ah, fuck. Taysom Hill would have been the all upside team right there. Taysom Hill needs to be on the upside team. I can't believe I fucking missed him. I tried so hard. I got it. You guys saw that. You guys saw that on camera. I took them off the queue, and Taysom Hill was the only guy remaining. And they still took Zach Evans. God damn it. I wanted Zach Evans, though. Um, Oh, yeah, let's go, Larry. We synced up there. Yeah, I, I think Zach Evans will enter the season as the two immediately. And we'll see if Cam Akers makes it the whole way. But Zach Evans, I think, has some some traits that will get him on the field regardless. And if something does happen to Akers, then it's, then it's probably all his backfield. Well, not all, but he'll he'll get a lot of that backfield. All this stuff about Darnold's just smoke, right? No way San Fran never lets Lance Cook. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think those are two different things. I think there's a very real chance that they never let Trey Lance cook. I think they feel, I think if Brock Purdy's healthy, he's without a doubt the one. The smoke, yeah, the smoke, I don't I don't know. I, I, the smoke with Sam Darnold feels just like Twitter smoke. It feels like people are just like saying shit to say shit. It's funny because like Darnold, anytime Sam Darnold's playing quarterback, everyone's like, he is terrible. He sucks. He's the worst quarterback ever. And then for some reason, they like try to get cute with him now. I could see him beating out Trey Lance because like, what the fuck is Trey Lance at this point? But there's no if, – if all three are healthy, it's Brock Purdy's uh, team. All right. I want Isaiah Hodgins. Hodgins balled out last year, man. I just I find it tough for them. I find it tough to believe that he doesn't – he's not at least one of the two starters and two wide receiver sets. I know Wondell will be back, but he's a slot guy. That's really all he did last year despite having a couple big games. Hodgins was, Hodgins was nice on the outside, man. I, I feel like he's going to be an underrated asset in fantasy this year. Uh, plans after this draft, bike to bike drafts. No, unfortunately, it's uh, it's too beautiful out. Honestly, it's uh, way too beautiful out right now. It is seventy five degrees. It is sunny. I need to get outside. I need to go to the park. I need to not be locked up inside my office. Pretty walks onto the field week one with no practice and gets a starting nod. I feel like it's Lance's job unless he sucks this off season. Uh, I mean, even if you believe that, there's a very high chance that he sucks this off season. He's got to, I mean, he's got to beat Sam Darnold. And then uh, I don't, I have very, very little faith in Trey Lance right now, at least for the 49ers. Oh, also make sure you watch our vlog. We just had uh, our weekly Sunday vlog went live. I should have told Tony to uh, schedule it for 2.30 instead. But just went live. Go hit that thumbs up. Go do all that sheesh. So I'm looking at some of the players left on the board. From an upside perspective, um, I don't know how much upside Jaden Reed has. 50th overall pick by the Packers. I really like him as a player. I don't know if he'll, you know, really, really like break out year one. I don't know. I don't even know what a breakout would look like for Jaden Reed in year one. Maybe like maybe 700 yards, five touchdowns, something like that. I like Tyquan Thornton. I think he brings something to this offense that they just don't have in any other player. He's really long. He's really explosive, extremely fucking fast. And they don't have that. I think we had a much better year last year, obviously, if he didn't get hurt and he missed a ton of the beginning of the season. So for a rookie to miss, summer and the beginning of the regular season, there's almost no chance that you can kind of like battle back in a Bill Belichick offense. I have Desmond Ritter. I have Sam Howell as QBs. If I want to take a third quarterback, I'm not sure if I want to do that because Hurts and Watson feel pretty strong to me. I do want to get that like Ritter pit stack. And I also feel like Sam Howell and Jahan Dotson stack is not terrible. And Howell, both of them have some running upside as well. So I feel like they have decent upside. Um, I don't hate Tank Bigsby either. I think it was a pretty good pairing with... Uh, fuck. All right, we took Jaden Reed. I meant to take Tank Bigsby there. Um, I, I like Tank behind Travis Etienne. I think he's going to get a decent amount of work. I think he could end up being maybe a goal line back there too. We'll see if he falls back to me. I probably need a fifth running back. My wide receivers feel pretty pretty strong right now though. We only got two more rounds left, so I got to start deciding. Do I want to add a third tight end? Because I did take a rookie tight end here. You look at guys like Isaiah Likely, who had like some semi breakout last year. He's obviously sitting behind Mark Andrews, but if something happens to Mark Andrews, then we are looking, then we are looking at a probably a top five tight end. Good question. Is a third quarterback not a good idea this early since we don't know the buy schedules? Watson hurt. Yeah, I, honestly, probably drafting this early is just not a good idea in general. The closer we get to the season, the more information we have, the better picks we can make. So 
it, it's probably just not a good idea. We, you know, we contractually have to do these drafts. I love doing them anyways, but um, without knowing the buy yet, pr- probably, I, I, I think like drafting a third quarterback, I would, I would say the points that you made are almost contradicting. Like if they do end up with the same buys, then you would want a third quarterback, right? With that being said, also the 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 team who won the BBM three had three quarterbacks on it. So in terms of builds, you know, you could win with that build. Yes. I'm gonna grab Desmond Ritter here as my QB three. Probably didn't need to do it, but you know, maybe Ritter is a fucking superstar. Kyle Pitts is a superstar. And we take it home. Flies off ADP change that'll happen later on if you draft early. Yeah, I mean, listen, it works both ways. You can capitalize on things that change now, but you could also be like extremely wrong and draft guys in the sixth round that end up going in the tenth round. It's really just depending on how sharp you think you are, and most people are just not as sharp as they think they are. If you take Hill, draft a Bills player or Patriots. I'm trying to understand what you mean by that. You mean like Tyree Kill, thinking that they're going to play against each other in the week seventeen? That would make sense. Uh, last year, ADP, J.K. Dobbins was going pick 43. What? If they announce Lance the week one starter, for example, he'll start going in the ninth, 10th. Yeah, probably. I, s- I still think people are going to hesitate thinking that there's a very good chance he gets benched at any point. We're getting into our last pick here. We have three quarterbacks. We got four running backs, eight wide receivers, two tight ends. Um, definitely trying to decide between running backs and tight ends right now. Are there any tight ends on the board that I kind of like? I'm going I'm to throw Likely in there as an upside play. I'm going to throw Luke Musgrave in there as an upside play, and then we're going to pivot over to the running backs. Fournette and Hunt, I have a hard time believing that. One, if they sign with anybody, it'll be for a vet minimum deal at this point and probably enter as like the three in their backfield. So I don't know what the, the upside really is there. Chuba, fuck Chuba. Michael Carter, nah, they added Izzy. Brees obviously is a beast. Jerome Ford, like... I don't know. There, there's some like decent rumblings about Ford. I don't, I don't. I never really thought he was a great running back coming out in last year's class. Obviously, Nick Chubb's ahead of him. He would be the two, I guess, if something happened to, to Chubb. I just, I have, I, I have trouble drafting dudes that if people stay healthy, they have, they put up a zero. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't like doing that. Eric Gray, can we get a Saquon holdout? Evan Hull's kind of, kind of cool too, I guess. Is Ronald Jones going to be a thing? Yo, you motherfuckers, you took Isaiah Likely from me, you, you sons of bitches. I feel like really weirdly good about my running backs. Ramondre Stevenson, Devon A. Chain, Jarek McKinnon, Zach Evans. Like, I, There's no chance I should feel this good. And do I take Evan Hull or Luke Musgrave? Vote vote in the chat. I need you guys. I need a majority vote here. Evan Hull, Luke Musgrave. Evan Hull, Luke Musgrave. Evan Hall, I feel like could have a nice pass catching role there in Indy. Uh, Luke Musgrave could just be the tight end one, though. Eh, fuck it. Let's go, Hall. All right. Well, that's the final board, and that's the final team. I feel like this was a super strong team. I like this team. Obviously, I could have probably gotten a little bit stronger at the running back spot. Absolutely. I really wish Zeke fell to me here, but he didn't. It's all good. Otherwise, I, I like the build a lot. Cole Hartman, Darius Slayton, Leonard Fournette, and let's see what Tanyan does for his last pick. And the draft. What is what's happening here? I think it's over. I think they just never have the last pick going. All right. Um, that's all I got for you today. I got to get outside because I feel like a I feel like a mess sitting in here, rotting away inside on a beautiful summer day. Uh, make sure. You go hit the LeBron line. It's free money right now in Underdog. First time depositing, use promo code BDGE. Put down 25. They'll give you 25 on top of that to play with. Go win 50 more through this bet right here. One point from LeBron. And then you'll have like 75 best ball mania entries. All right? Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're doing these like 75 times a week. I love you when I'm out of here.